cinema cameras are getting smaller and smaller and of course more lightweight together with that. You've got the Kinefinity lineup, you've got the Zcam lineup which I myself use, you've got cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera which are incredibly lightweight but still pack a lot of punch in terms of image quality. So what do you use to stabilize that? Do you throw your two or three or $10,000 cinema camera rig onto a $100 tripod? Well, maybe if you don't plan on moving it, but if you want to introduce some camera movements, some tilts, some pans, and you want that to be smooth and stable and steady, then you're going to want to start thinking about spending a bit more. So what's next? And please don't say Manfrotto. I hate Manfrotto tripods. They're overpriced for what they have to offer. They're oversized and awkward most of the time. And I've literally never bought anything from Manfrotto that hasn't eventually broken. Okay, that's a lie. Their actual tripod plates are nice at least. Anyway, above that price, the well-known brands on the market are of course going to work great. There's no question about that, but they're gonna cost you. I mean, my Satchler, Sackler, Sack, Sackler, my nice tripod cost almost $3,000 total. For that reason, I've really, really loved my Terrace TSN6 over the past year or so. It's what I'm using right now for this camera, and it's only about $800, but it stands up there right along with the big boys in terms of build quality and the movement, the quality of the movement, and it has carbon fiber legs with single lock quick leg system. It's really, really a great tripod for the money. So at interview this year, I was really excited to see the newest from Terrace. This is the TCE, the CF in this case for carbon fiber. The legs are carbon fiber, but they do also have an aluminum version. This head right here is basically the same functionality wise as the TSN6, which I was just talking about. But this whole package, including the carbon fiber legs, comes in at under $450. Come on, just get it. Longest intro ever. Over. <laughs> Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, please do consider subscribing. We do all kinds of unboxing, test reviews, tutorials, anything photo and video related. And if you do like the content today, please consider hitting the little bell icon when you subscribe to make sure you get notifications of new content in the future. So obviously today we're gonna do a quick little review for this tripod right here, the Terrace TCE. Uh, but despite its few downsides, it's seriously, easily the best kind of entry level serious video tripod on the market. I would say right up front, don't waste your money on any any other tripod unless you go significantly cheaper or significantly more expensive. Anyway, it's a tripod. There's really not a whole lot to say, but let's run through what makes this really great and a few of the downfalls along the way. The head is almost exactly the same again as its big brother in terms of functionality. It has four steps of drag and counterbalance. Well, technically three because number one equals nothing. And it can balance up to seven kilograms, which is pretty much enough to cover almost all small to medium cinema camera packages on the market. My full frame Zcam E2 F6 with a fairly heavy 85 millimeter lens, a V-mount battery in the back and a big metal seven inch monitor on top only needs somewhere between one and two on the counterbalance. The drag is so smooth and the highest level is pretty high. So you're definitely gonna be able to dial in enough drag to get a significant amount of resistance against those imperfections in your hand movement. On the pan axis, there is a very slight amount of backlash when you bring it to a full stop, but there's more to it, so let's take a look at that. That means that when you look at the footage, you can see it kind of bounce back very slightly, especially at longer focal lengths. It's not much more though than something like the very expensive FSB8, which of course is virtually non-existent at that price. And with the terrace, if you hold your hand on the pan bar, even just a split second longer at the end of that pan, it really, really, really cancels out all of that backlash. So as long as you're just a little bit careful with your technique, you don't have to worry about that at all. For me, it's really not a problem when I look at my wallet and I say, hey, I just saved $2,500. It's also something that's totally present in other tripod heads in this price range like this Manfrotto N8, for example, which is freaking huge and it's really got this annoying, annoying quick release system. Just don't buy Manfrotto stuff. The drop-in plate system is awesome. I loved this feature on the FSB8. It's one of my favorite features about it. It's just so much quicker and less awkward than trying to look and slide in a plate on a big heavy cinema camera. Just dropping it in, tightening it down is just so much easier. Super, super easy. The only sad thing here is that I originally thought this was a Manfrotto compatible plate and it's not. It's a little bit wider which is kind of annoying because a lot of other things like gimbals or glide cams and stuff use Manfrotto plates and being able to switch that back and forth without having to change plates is really convenient. I've gotten over it personally since my F6 is pretty much going to be living on here or being handheld and when I use gimbals or glide cams or something like that I'll probably be using my E2 which has a Manfrotto plate on it. 
If that cross compatibility is an issue for you though, you could always just get something like this little flat man Frodo plate that I got from Small Rig, and then you could put the terrace plate right onto the bottom of this. And then when you wanted to take the camera off quickly, you could just use that quick drop in release that I talked about and just take this whole thing off, including this, which doesn't add much to your rig. And then when you wanted that Manfrotto plate, you could just slide it out of here. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. I really like the carbon fiber legs. This whole setup is surprisingly lightweight at under five kilograms. And despite the fact that these are not the quick single lock system that the TSN6Q has, I do really like the legs here. The locks feel good and they hold a heavy camera with no problem. This can also go up to about 160 centimeters and of course that's not including the height of the head and it can go down to about 70 centimeters. The mid-level spreader helps keep them nice and rigid and really nothing here feels cheap at all when you consider the price. Getting a bit off topic but speaking of the price, the reason that this is able to be cheaper than the TSN6 despite the fact that it has the same functionality is that the materials in the head are of course a little bit cheaper. Now that's nothing to worry about. It's incredibly solid and all of the things that are critical are made of metal here, including the 75 millimeter bowl on the tripod, but it's really, really solid considering it's made from cheaper materials. But if you're curious, that's where they cut costs. Once more, while well, on the topic of cost, they do also have an aluminum version of the tripod instead of the carbon fiber legs and that whole package comes in at under $400. There do seem to be from the pictures at least some small design differences in the aluminum version. So if you do decide to go that route, just make sure you check before you make your purchase. Finally, there's the carrying bag and it's just a simple bag, but I do like it more than the bag for the TSN6 actually, which was a little bit tight of a fit. You know, the bag for this is just very simple, but it fits well and it's nice that it does come with a carry case. I feel like as usual, I rambled a bit more than I intended to here. So if you're still watching, damn, good for you. But the bottom line is this is the tripod you should be getting if you're looking for something that's legit, but doesn't break the bank and you use small to medium sized camera rigs. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and share it with your friends.